What's going on, everybody? I am trying to act cooler than I am. I'm Alex Pendria, and welcome back. All right, what do we got for today? We are going to talk about the Bicycle Inspire playing cards. So this deck right here was just released maybe a few weeks ago, and a lot of people are talking about it as uh, um, a standard day-to-day -day deck that now they're going to use, which really excites me just because um, it was a hit or miss with this. The idea came about many years ago, and I didn't know exactly how people were going to take it. Are they going to just think, oh, he just put two bicycles on the back of cards? as everybody seems to do these days, uh, but there's more to it than that. So the story of the Bicycle Inspires, uh, first and foremost, came from the word inspire. I think the word inspire is very, uh, I hate to say inspirational, but it is one of the powerful words that I sort of live by, especially when it comes to magic, okay? Magic should be inspirational for the people watching. No matter what type of magic you do, whether it be a serious type of magic, maybe mentalism, if you do comedy magic, doesn't matter what genre of magic you do, it should be ultimately inspirational for the people watching. You know, when thinking about my magic maybe even five years ago, all I wanted to do was be the person that was cool at the bar, you know, hanging out, doing a couple of tricks. <laughs> um, and now more and more, um, especially over the last couple of years, after seeing so much magic around the world and hanging around with so many great people, um, I was really inspired uh, to inspire others, okay? The reason why it is Bicycle Inspire is because when you think about Bicycle, Bicycle the brand has been around for more than 100 years. And its brand right now, we know it just for their, mainly for their rider backs, right? And it kind of became a commercially used everyday product that if you use bicycle decks, especially rider backs, you got used to and there's no feeling behind it anymore. Now for me, feeling is everything. You have to put feeling into everything that you do. Um, so when even having a deck of cards and doing a simple trick, right, it doesn't matter the trick, you have to have a feeling when holding that deck of cards, okay? It's gonna make your performance better, it's gonna make you want to be better, um, and that's just really how I feel. So in any deck that I do design, whether they be the Nox, as creative as they are, um, or any other one, I want a feeling when I have that card, the deck of cards in my hand. With the Bicycle brand, really in my opinion has no feeling behind it right because it's so overly used and so commercialized and really the rider back doesn't besides a little angel on the bicycle it doesn't really have to do with with bicycle that bicycle right the bicycle right image um which can mean so much that bicycle image can mean a lot to people right um think about it like this and i'm sure some of you might even relate to this when you were little uh, and, you, and you started to learn to ride a bicycle, um, what happens oftentimes? You don't get it the first time, you don't get it the second time. You get on that bicycle and maybe you fall, but guess what? You pick yourself right back up and you get back on that bicycle and you move forward, right? Now it's this concept of never giving up and getting back on the bicycle and, and, and following your dreams to whatever they may be caused me to link the feeling, this feeling that I'm talking about with the Bicycle brand. Now working together with Bicycle, with USPC, I've worked with them for over five, I think six years now. And we created a strong relationship and I wanted to bring that back to this brand that everybody has loved for over a hundred years. Um, and that feeling right there is, is very strong. It could, it could lead to different emotions. So um, on a very simple level, that was my thought into putting two bicycles on the back of cards. Now, I have here follow your dreams uh, to keep in mind when you do grab this deck and you see that image of that bicycle, you know to never give up and follow your dreams. As long as you know that, now you have a feeling that goes when holding this deck of cards and hopefully that will transcend into your magic, into your card stuff uh, and make everybody smile, right? One thing that I am super excited about, I don't know when this happened or how this happened, but USPC, thank God that you fixed the tab that goes because I swear to God I've bruised my fingers ripped my nails apart so many times trying to peel away this goddamn cellophane and I can never do it right for years and years and it drove everybody crazy right um, but now guess what look at this that's amazing I love this boom boom now we can get into the marketing system 
All right, the Queen of Hearts this is a little secret that you might have overmissed. If you do have this deck, look through it. The Queen of Hearts has a reveal on the back of itself, and it actually says Queen of Hearts right there. So there is a cool effect that we're going to get into of how to do that. The idea of this deck is to be a standard deck that you would use day to day and uh, have them be marked. So, you know, when, when you have decks of cards that look odd, uh, people can question them. And what people know, they don't know about gimmicks or anything like that, but they do know about marked cards. So it's very important, especially like things like the knocks and things like this, uh, that they can't be marked. Um, and so you put a marking system in there and then they are marked, boom, in their face. So let's take a look at um, the wheels of the actual bike, okay? I'm gonna bring this in just like that so you can see. Now, I don't know exactly how clear this is going to be for the camera um, because you have to look on the wheels of themselves just in case, if you go to the bluecrown.com link below, you can see the marking system right there. The spokes themselves, which are the lines inside the wheels, are going to make up the marking system. Now it's very, very easy. So if you have a watch on your wrist, check it out. If you have a clock on your wall, look up at it and you'll see that it goes 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, right? And then it goes back to 12. So there are 12 lines, right? To make it easy to follow, 12 lines uh, on each of these. Now all you have to do is look for the thin line. The thin line will tell you exactly what the marking is. So on the left one is going to be the value, whether it's ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, or king. Um, and on the right one, it will be clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds for the suit. So in this case, right, if I'm looking at it, I know 12 would be on the hour 12 then going one, and then two, and then three, four, five, six, so on and so forth. So I know that it's not 12, not one, not two, but look, that three, again, I don't know how clear this is on here, the three is thinner, so I know it's a three. Now I go to here, and I go clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds. Diamonds is the thinnest, right? So starting at the top, clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds on the right side. So remember, it's only four on the right side. Now I know it's a three of diamonds, and sure enough, it's a three of diamonds, okay? We get to a very interesting one over here because this one, you see that, I don't know again if you can see, but there are no markings on the actual one. So that means it's a value of 13, which is a king, right? So jack would be 11, 12 is a queen, 13 is a king. So we know that this is a king, just like that. Okay, now this is the first time that I'm revealing this because uh, I didn't want to in the beginning, but I felt like it's such a cool little thing that I had to do it. Um, I have a secondary marking system that I built into this and the secondary marking system is actually going to be at the corners, the upper left hand corners, right? No matter which way you turn it, it'll still be in one of these corners um, of the card and that's going to tell the marking system only for red or black. The inner white part, so there's a white inner border, it's either going to be sharp or round, okay? Sharp, which is on top here and round which is here okay now if it's round it's going to be black if it's sharp it's going to be red okay this one is round so it's black this one is round so it's black okay this one again round black red 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 okay so on and so forth now that we know the marking system, uh, that's cool in itself, but we have to use it somehow. And we really have to use it in a way that would make sense, okay? Now, you don't want to just literally go through the cards and say, this is the three of hearts, this is the whatever, whatever, right? And I'm sure you all know that, but trust me, I've seen some, some killer effects with mark cards. And by killer, I mean horrible. And you just don't want the obvious method to be that they're marked cards, okay? So you have to construct whatever routine that you do in such a way that marked cards are completely the last thing that they would think about. Make sense? Good. This is what I used to do when I was, I think, 10 years old and I had a bridge-sized marked deck of cards and it was horrible, right? And uh, I would have the card selected, place it back into my hand and I would stare down at it. Ten of hearts. Right? And I think that's literally what I did. Uh, and obviously, that itself is not 
it's not good, um, in my opinion. Right? You could do that. Feel free, post videos, man. Um, that in itself can still be good if you layer it correctly. So the way that I would do it, uh, and I suggest you guys to test out your own different ways of, of, of layering something very simple, is to do the following. Have a card selected, okay? And um, tell them that it's important that you take out a card that means something to you, okay? Because I'm not going to be able to do this, uh, and this might not work. Um, if it doesn't mean at least something to you. So saying things like this uh, make you stand out automatically from the pick a card, find the card type of magician. All right. Saying things that can totally have no meaning and only meaning to the spectator is very powerful. So I say it's very important that you go through and if it doesn't feel right, don't take it out. Uh, but when it does, go ahead, take it out. Um, and I don't even tell them to place it in my palm. I would just turn around with my hand stuck out like this and when you're ready okay because you don't want the verbal put it into my hand to come back and if they you know because magicians all the time now I'm gonna do this now I'm gonna do this there are ways to do things without saying what you're doing okay uh, and one of the ways if you don't want this part remembered um, because you want to read the marking you just literally hold out your hand and you say and when you're ready okay and I just do this okay and now I make a remark about the card, right, based off of any sort of cold reading that you want to give them, based off of, it could literally be bullshit that comes out your mouth right now. I would say something before I turn my head. Now, just knowing you for the short amount of time that I do, I feel like you're a warm person, right? You're kind to people. Would you say that? And then I turn around and you just say something that could be somewhat flattering and uh, they'll have a reaction, they'll answer, they'll say yes or no, and then I come down and I take a peek at whether it's red or black, okay? Good, so once again, head turned, hand out, nothing there. As she's gonna place it here, you start saying, you're the type of person that blah, 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 whatever, whatever, and as you turn like that, you would say, would you agree to something positive, obviously, um, and they would say yes you go look down you see it's a red card and then you say that kind of person would take out usually a red card if it's black you would obviously say this kind of person would take out a black card okay it really doesn't matter at this point but you just want to nail the color first all right as you nail the color you look down you see what the card is and you place it to the side and now you can reveal the card in whatever way you want okay but these are just little things that you can add to things that you're already doing, like forcing a card and revealing it, or knowing the markings on it. You could do this, but adding layers makes it that even that much more uh, powerful, I think. Okay, so now what we're gonna talk about is how to use this duplicate Queen of Hearts with the Reveal Queen of Hearts. Now I know what you're thinking, uh, cheesy revelation that you just put there, but the way that I thought about it um, is to build uh, something of value with something very very small and it's more just an exercise of how creative can you be with something that people would just pass up as oh, it's nothing look Queen of Hearts wow big deal now how are we going to use it first and foremost we're gonna force the card so go ahead force the Queen of Hearts however way you want to do it whether it be a riffle force say stop anywhere you want um, a classic force or any other way uh, my personal favorite is I would try to get them, especially females, to name their favorite card. If you see, if you saw yourself as a card, what would it be, right? So usually when I do this, I would place a jack or a king on the face of the pack, okay, for me. So let's say um, I would say king of spades. I would place on the on the pack right here, right? As as I'm asking them to name a card. If you saw yourself as a card, right? Um, what would it be? Or your favorite card and you, and you just don't give them time really to think about it and you know more likely than not they will say queen of hearts the ladies also do say ace of hearts um, so you can run with that if they do say queen of hearts now so queen of hearts is forced to the spectator and you're going to control it to the top of the pack using your favorite method today we're going to do the simplest way possible um, the double undercuts just because we haven't gone through uh, anything else on this youtube channel but i'm sure all you guys know a bunch of controls Queen of Hearts is now on top, okay? What you're going to do is do a double lift, okay? Now I'm going to push this card over, right, as I tilt my hand back so I can actually show the card 
to the spectator and give it to them okay now it's important that you do this because they you want to see what the back says all right so I give them the card and I ask them what does it say on the back it says follow your dreams but the presentation it works if you sell it okay anything anything does if you're sincere about it enough so I say um, this the reason I use this deck of cards is because I saw this deck in a gift shop and I just saw this phrase follow your dreams now that stuck with me because uh, like with everything following your dreams is a big part of life right never giving up and I guess that's why they have that little bicycle there because when I was little I got on that bicycle and I fell a bunch of times but I got up and, and I tried again until I succeeded uh, which is a very nice way of thinking of something that we take for granted, just the image of a bicycle, right? Uh, and an image of a random card. So right now, this means nothing to us. It's just the three of hearts. It's not even the card that you picked, right? It's not even your favorite card. You're going to help me to create something that we thought would be impossible, right? For example, riding a bike when you were little may seem impossible the first couple of times we do it. But then afterwards, can you hold out your hand for me? So they hold out their hand and you place it just like that. Afterwards, after we achieved it, we said, anything is possible. We can do anything, no matter what. So the first thing I want to show you is this. And then I'm going to literally just take my finger, and they're watching over here. They're not seeing exactly what's happening. Remember, you're switching the card for the Queen of Hearts with the Queen of Hearts revelation on it. Now, I'm just going to take my finger, and I'm just going to wipe slowly across to follow your dreams the follow your dream saying and they'll see it visually change because they're not focused in on this they don't know what you're gonna do so I just just like that and I give them a second just to stare down at the card that's in their hand and give a reaction once they see this once you see their eyes light up then you take a step back and you just wait for it sometimes they'll turn the card over which is an even more shock Right? It's, it's boom boom, really fast put together all in one. Um, or if they can't believe that it's there and they haven't turned it over just yet, I would then take my hand and slowly move it across the deck, uh, across the card just like that, mimicking what you did to this. And then finally revealing that now the card has changed the Queen of Hearts. It's a miracle. Uh, and now you've created something out of nothing, okay? Okay guys, so besides learning the marking system and me sitting here asking you to pick up a few of these decks because they are so awesome, um, I do hope that this video did instill some sort of inspiration into your magic and to the things that you want to think about and, and perform and do for your audience. Um, I think it's very, very important to not take the little things for granted. So even a revelation on the back of a card or a double lift um, can be overlooked and it does get overlooked a lot of the times, but we can build layers on top of it and make them more powerful than they are. If you guys did enjoy this video, please hit that like button and do subscribe to this channel. Share it with your friends if you can. And most importantly, do comment below. I do want to hear your thoughts. That's what's going to make this channel even better. Uh, if you like something, if you didn't like something, uh, and just thoughts on the routines that I've done, how to make it better, um, because I'm sure there's so many creative people out there and this should be a conversation, yeah? So, I didn't forget about the contest, don't worry. We had over a thousand people enter the contest, which makes me very, very happy. So I realized something, one winner is not enough for this contest. Uh, so I'm gonna announce the winners, plural, on my Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram, it's a.pandrea, and check out the winners of my unboxing contest on my Instagram. Congratulations to the winners and I will see you guys next time.